Good morning to all our Mid-Atlantic PGA professionals, associates, distinguished guests. I'm Josh Tremblay, the PGA section president from Springfield Golf and Country Club. I'd like to now ask that the meeting come to order. I'd like to begin this meeting by thanking everyone for joining us this morning. And while we look forward certainly to a time when we can host the membership in person, uh, we're excited to hold this meeting today virtually. In this virtual environment, a few elements of the meeting uh, will be accomplished a little bit differently than they had when the meeting was in person. Uh, those of you who joined us a few minutes ago, Executive Director John Gould um, has asked you to enter in your name and your PGA number in the chat, and that's how we'll take attendance. Um, we kindly ask for your understanding during this meeting, as this is new to us all. Hopefully many of you joined us during the chapter meetings as well. Uh, please listen closely as we have a couple important housekeeping items. Um, as I said, attendance will be recorded uh, for today's meeting by entering your full name and PGID number in the chat. If you have not done so already, please enter this information now. In order to receive MSR credits for today's meeting, you must enter this information within the next 30 minutes. While we, we will conduct a roll call of the section board of directors later in the meeting, only the officers will reply verbally. The rest of the board of directors can reply in the chat and also will be recorded via the registration and check-in process. On the screen, you will see your officers and others that will be presenting during today's meeting. While we'll be able to see and hear them, we won't be able to hear you. If you do have questions or comments, uh, we want this to be interactive, so please utilize the chat feature. Uh, this will include our open forum uh, items later in the agenda. In order to make this call more like a meeting and less like a streaming TV show, we do want to encourage you to interact with us using the chat feature. Uh, our executive director, John Gould, will be moderating this and we'll read your questions and comments aloud if possible, and we will try to get an answer today or follow up with you shortly after the meeting. Typically during our fall section meeting, we would have also hosted our incredible sponsors at the sponsor fair. Fortunately, while we're not able to do that today, uh, we will introduce them all later in the meeting. Before we play the national anthem, I'd like to remind the audience that any former mem member of the military, whether active or reserve, enjoys the privilege of saluting the flag, just as they did when serving this great nation. Wherever you are joining the meeting, would you please rise in place for our national anthem? Thank you, everyone. I have asked Vice President Andy Weisinger to offer this morning's invocation. Morning, let's pray. Dear Father, we thank you for this time that our country is facing. Lord, we thank you for all the things that you can do through us as PGA professionals. Lord, we ask for your peace. We ask for your guidance. We ask for your wisdom. Lord, please be with our men and women in uniform as they serve here at home and overseas, that they might be able to protect our freedoms or to keep them safe as they do so. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity we have to meet over platforms like Zoom, 
where we otherwise would not be able to get together. Or please be with our association, its officers. And we want to say a special prayer for the family of Mickey Powell, past national PGA president who passed away this weekend. Lord, we love you. We thank you for this opportunity. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Andy. Mr. Michael Thomas, the Director of Instruction at Chartwell Golf and Country Club will serve as Sergeant at Arms. Mr. Thomas will ensure that everyone in attendance remains in order, a challenging task here in this Zoom uh, climate, in accordance with section policy. I also ask that you ensure via the chat the staff closes the meeting registration 30 minutes after I call this meeting to order. While difficult in a virtual meeting, I'd like to ask everyone present to please make sure that you remain focused on the meeting so that you don't miss out on any important information. Mr. J.P. Lund, the PGA head professional at Fountainhead Country Club will serve as par parliamentarian. J.P. Thank you, Josh. Good morning, everyone. I just wanted to let uh, everyone know, I look forward to the time we can do this in person. We get to see everybody. Uh, Frank Corelco, I'm just uh, keeping the chair warm for you. We hope to have everybody together in person soon. Uh, you've already been provided with the agenda for today's meeting. As usual, the meeting will be conducted in ordinance with the MAPGA and the PGA of America bylaws and Robert's rules of order as so far as possible. New business items must be submitted in writing in the chat to the secretary before the new business segment is reached on the agenda. Only questions or topics in writing will be addressed during this session. <clears throat> during the open forum session near the end of the meeting, any member may either may enter the information into the chat. Executive Director Gould will read the open forum information into the meeting. However, no official business may be transacted during the session. Thank you, JP. Given a change in the schedule, we need to deviate from our original agenda and we're gonna do our national update now. We have the tag team of our newly elected Vice President of the PGA of America, John Lindert from the Michigan section and our own District 10 Director, John Madden. As you know, 2020 has been a year unlike any other and we'd like to give Mr. Lindert and Mr. Madden the opportunity to share an update with you today. Please enter your questions for them in the chat. Gentlemen. Thanks, Josh. Um, I can't believe the year's already passed and uh, what, a, what a kind of crazy year it has been with this COVID-19. Uh, um, I'm, I'm proud to say that we, there are a lot we've accomplished on the board uh, for the member this year. Uh, the Golf Emergency Relief Fund, uh, where close to $8 million were given out. Uh, we were able to uh, defer dues. Uh, came up with the Back to Golf Playbook, which hopefully everyone continues to use um, as we change from different phases. As uh, we also offered online education and had a, a lot of men and women, members and associates take advantage of that. Um, as, as indicated, uh, we had an election at the 104th annual meeting uh, that was virtual and uh, pretty exciting. Uh, we had four great candidates. And after the second ballot, uh, Don Ray became the new secretary. Um, I'm excited to uh, work with Don over the next two years on the board. He'll make a great secretary. Uh, I'm looking forward to his insight um, in the boardroom. I can't say enough for uh, our, our honorary president now, Susie Whaley, and all her hard work over the last two years and her leadership, especially this year um, with this pandemic. Um, she was great in the boardroom and, and always thinking about the member and uh, what we can do uh, there. So exciting uh, to, you know, really to, to see her and, and everything she did. It was just outstanding. Um, we are looking into um, our associates in our PGM programs. Those are the two uh, pathways to membership in the PGA. And over the last 10 years, we've seen a huge decline in men and women joining our ranks. So the uh, membership, uh, the education committees, employment, um, we're tasked to kind of figure out how we can get through these barriers, um, which we're hearing from the men and women and why they're not becoming members. Um, 
they told us about cost. They told us about the time commitment. They, they explained that there was no online education part of it, um, the entrance requirements. And then we heard about compensation when they, when they be, do get into the workplace, how uh, it's not equal to other um, businesses and jobs. And so, and also a life work balance. So we're looking at all that, um, the task force was put together to look at the universities. We have 18 across the country. Um, all of them are under agreement until 2023. Um, Clemson did notify us that they will uh, be discontinuing their program. Um, but, um, you know, it's, uh, we're, we're looking closely at it. Uh, we're gonna have some new standards uh, that'll be put in place, <laughs> criteria that they'll have to follow um, and everyone will be able to reapply going down the road. Um, we're looking at some new education, maybe more virtual online, um, getting people an opportunity to, to jump into to our business, um, maybe as a second career, maybe as a transfer student. So a lot of things are on the table right now. And uh, coming down the road here in, in 2021, 20, uh, we'll have uh, some exciting announcements to make there. So uh, we we'll look forward to that. Uh, as far as properties, I know uh, John's going to mention some stuff, but uh, Valhalla had a, a, a typical COVID year, uh, closed for a little bit, jumped back on board, uh, didn't have the guest play as we anticipated, um, but we're excited in 2024, it'll be the host of our PGA Championship. I know down the road here, we'll be doing some uh, upgrades, uh, building some new tees for, as, as we all know, the, the ball tends to fly a little farther on tour than regular ones. So we're doing some fairway work and maybe some bunker work down, down the road. A PGA Golf Club, we did some renovations there, um, the Wanamaker course, and then uh, the practice facility and range was up, upgraded. Um, all that is open. Uh, we're getting uh, rave reviews on all the improvements there. So uh, also um, our headquarters, Palm Beach Gardens, uh, we're almost completed there. Um, hopefully we'll get the, the staff moved back in early uh, 2021. And uh you know, as long as the uh, the county will allow us with the COVID restrictions. So uh, we're excited about that. Uh, Frisco, I know John's going to talk about that one, but it's just, it's it's going to be awesome. Uh, I'm just, I'll put it that way. Um, looking at, uh, we're going to do a virtual teaching and coaching summit coming up here uh, in January on the 25th. It'll be live. Uh, we look forward to everybody joining us for that. Uh, that'll be an exciting, exciting times. And finally, just want to, uh, once again, thank uh, the Mid-Atlantic leadership and the staff and uh, everything they did for uh, really helping out the member and the associate during these trying times, uh, coming up with ways for uh, giving out grants for videos for um, you know, teaching and all that, um, very creative. So uh, your support uh, and uh, th thinking forward has really helped a lot of the members. So I'll pass it over to John right now and he can uh, give you some more updates nationally. Thanks, John. <clears throat> good morning, everyone. Uh, JP, it's good to see you. Um, you're looking healthy, and uh, me, my prayers continue for you and your family. Uh, to the Mid-Atlantic section, know that uh, John Madden is doing a fantastic job representing you on the virtual PGA of America board, because that's pretty much what it's been. Uh, and I'm just going to kind of highlight some of the challenges that we've gone through and some of the, the, the decisions the board has made. You know, the year started off with us having to postpone our PPC from April to July, and we later came to cancel that, obviously due to travel restrictions to Texas. The PJ Championship was obviously postponed until August. Uh, Kerry Haig and his staff once again did a tremendous job. It was a little strange attending the PJ Championship without spectators, but the, the viewership was up tremendously. Uh, television broadcast did a tremendous job and the overall championship couldn't have been better. Uh, we ended up having to cancel the KitchenAid Senior PGA Championship, which was scheduled to be hosted here in Michigan, which was a little bit of a loss for our section, but it was the right thing to do for the community. The KPMG Women's PGA Championship was also postponed, and that was just completed at Aronimink, and, and what a wonderful host facility Aronimink turned out to be. The women on the, on the LPGA Tour are, are just really, really speaking positively about how we're running the KPMG Women's PGA Championship. 
the last two host venues being Hazeltine and Aronimake have just been fantastic. And obviously the, the, the big one, the Ryder Cup, postponing it one year, uh, no easy task for this board to accomplish, no easy task for staff to accomplish. Uh, if you're not familiar, we're on a four-year budget where really a lot of our revenues is predicated on the domestic Ryder Cup. So that moved that revenue off for one year. And then there was some negotiating with the PGA Tour because having us move the Ryder Cup to 2021 meant that the PGA Tour had to acquiesce again and move the President's Cup. So it was, it was a, a hot topic for a while. The board uh, did a lot of research, staff did a lot of work on it, and uh, I'm really looking forward to 2021. We obviously had pushed dues back to the end of October, realizing the strain that COVID had placed on, on PGA members and associates. And we also realized that that's gonna present challenges next year. So next year dues will not be due by, by June, but they'll be due by the end of August. Uh, there's more information to come on that. We pushed MSR requirements back from 2021 to 2022, thinking that people once again would have uh, increased challenges. Along with that, the associates uh, received one additional year on their acceptable progress. So instead of having eight years, they have nine years. As, as John mentioned, virtual learning became uh, the new norm. And that happened very quickly, Dawes, Marlette, and the education team did a fantastic job. And I, I, I'd live it firsthand. I had two associates. One was, uh, one was suspended, one was nearing the end of his acceptable progress for level one. Uh, Logan passed level one in, in early part of the year. He took level two virtually in April, passed level two, took level three virtually, passed level three and elected into membership in September. With that, my other associate, Kevin, um, kind of reinvigorated his, uh, his enthusiasm to become a PGA member because it, it seemed very daunting to him to try to get out of suspension and, and progress. He completed level one and took level two virtually in teaching and coaching this past week. Those, those examples are, are nationwide. And I think it's an example of the, what virtual does for our associates. The cost went from $2,000 to $750, and it eliminated a week away from your family or your employer or, or just a, a week away. So um, hopefully going forward with, with 4.0, um, we, will, we will have some of these barriers eliminated. With regards to some of the things that are going on with the PGA currently, PGA lead applications uh, are open, and they're open until midnight on November 13th. PJ Lead has turned out to be a fabulous program. We have seen many PJ Lead uh, professionals go on to become uh, section officers. I believe we have three section officers currently: the the vice president in Nebraska and Iowa, and and then the president of Pacific Northwest. We're all PJ Lead. So I, I urge you, if you're interested, please please apply. You you won't regret it. With regards to PJ Frisco. As John said, really excited about this. Um, when we first discussed this in the boardroom, I was one of the people that was kind of sitting on the sidelines thinking about it, whether could a building, could a headquarters be transformational? At the end of the day, the way this is, is being approached, it's gonna be absolutely transformational. Currently, the West course, which is the Bow Welling course is completely grassed. Uh, so much so that we're finding some golf balls on the golf course, ironically. Uh, the East course, which is Gil Hans uh, course is 16 holes are complete. Two other holes will be complete in May. The golf courses will schedule to open uh, in, in probably June of 2022. With regards to the, the head, headquarters, the footprint has been, has been dug. We're starting the build out of the new HQ. Um, we're looking for that to also happen in January of 2022. Hopefully we'll move staff into there by that time. As John mentioned, the update to the Palm Beach Gardens office is nearing completion. And uh, we look to move in there in January of 2021. Uh, John also mentioned about the, the Golf Emergency Relief Fund and, and what a tremendous effort it took by a lot of people to get this up and running. Uh, as he mentioned, almost $8 million was handed out. That money was donated by the PG of America from our reserve fund our key senior staff, 
our board, our officers, and PGA professionals across the country. And it not only benefited our PGA members, but it benefited others within the industry. And what a great way to take the lead during a challenging time. With regards to national awards, the timing's been thrown off for that. And I know JP, uh, year one, uh, apologize for what, we, what we've uh, had to go through with that. Uh, normally what we would do is we would award the 2020 winners at the annual meeting. Since that was virtual, we didn't feel like that was appropriate. The initial plan was to acknowledge the 2020 winners at the 2021 PJ Merchandise Show, which is now virtual again. Uh, and what we will do is we will actually acknowledge the 2020 winners at the 2021 annual meeting in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. This will be the template going forward. So your 2021 winners will be acknowledged at the 2022 PGA Merchandise Show, and they'll receive their awards at the 2022 annual meeting uh, in Scottsdale. We have entered into an agreement with Supreme Golf as far as online tee time reservations go. Uh, this is not a barter system. I know people get a little leery of, of uh, the online tea time reservation systems. The courses will get the consumer data. The courses uh, will be able to set the rate. They will be able to set the inventory. Um, PGA members will receive the lowest rate from Supreme Golf. And we're working on a, on a section component where the sections will have a portal as well to allow them to uh, reap some of the benefits. President Richardson, uh, being in the office for less than 10 days, he has started off uh, establishing committees. And as every sitting president has the opportunity, they get to establish what the committees look like, what the committees are. Uh, president Richardson is going to maintain most of the committees as, as previous. He's going to add a PGA HOPE committee. He's going through talking to potential committee chairs and I know he's working really diligently on trying to get uh, individuals represented from every section across the country. Uh, with re regards to deferred compensation, which has always been a hot topic, um, deferred compensation is actually before the IRS right now. Uh, we probably never thought this was going to happen, but Seth Waugh and the team have done a fantastic job. The challenges behind deferred compensation was how do we make it uh, available to all of our members? Uh, it seemed like we had uh, opportunity to present uh, award points for doing above and beyond, if you will, for teaching and coaching, a little bit more challenging in golf operations and, and executive management. So after a lot of research and a, after a lot of discussion, the officers approved a plan to, to present to the IRS. We, we are stretching the envelope here a little bit to see whether or not we can get, get this across the finish line. Uh, initial indication is that uh, we hope to have something in place very soon. And then our next challenge will be how do we fund it? Um, lastly, I'll just say this, that the past two years, it's been my honor and pleasure to serve as your secretary. I'm really excited to be with this officer group uh, Jim, Don Ray, and myself had already had numerous conversations, and um, we look forward to the next two years. I look forward to the next four years. I look forward to the PGA of America having a bright future and, uh, and serving our membership and our associates. I wish this could have been in person, and hopefully real soon this will be. Uh, and and uh, when it does, I'd love to come back to Mid-Atlantic and, and see everybody face to face. Thank you for your time today. And uh, we'll open it up for any questions. Hey, Josh, I, I don't have any questions uh, from the chat. If I would encourage some people to put in questions for either John Madden or John Linder. Uh, perhaps, uh, I don't know if you have any, uh, Josh, that you'd like to ask. No, I mean, uh, I just want to thank you, John, for taking the time to be on here today and just giving us the update. Um, I know Andy and Lynn and I got to be part of the virtual annual meeting a couple weeks ago when, when Don Ray was elected and uh, just wish you guys the best of luck going forward. As you said, hopefully we'll be doing more of these in person in uh, 2021. Um, we're hopeful to have our next section meeting in person. So um, I guess, you know, just from a, 
from a PGA standpoint, I know you mentioned the, you know, across the finish line, hopefully soon with the deferred comp. Um, what is your expectation once you get positive word back on that in terms of uh, when we might hear about that? Is that kind of after the new year or even before that? Uh, right now it's in the IRS's hands. So um, we're, we're holding on their timetable, not on ours. Uh, once they get a chance to review, obviously there's some conversation as to will the initial review come across positively or will we have to make some changes? So once we get the feedback from the IRS, we'll have a, a better um, idea of the timing. Okay, John and John, we got some questions starting to come in. So thank you to those who've submitted. Um, uh, first question from Jeremy Greiner, will the Palm Beach Gardens headquarters remain as is, move to a smaller space or closed? Uh, I'm not sure who would answer that, but. Um... The, the, the Palm Beach uh, headquarters currently right now is, is actually under renovation itself. Uh, it remains on the same footprint that it was uh, previous. We probably will not use 100% of the interior once, once the uh, redesign is complete. Uh, it's not at this point in time scheduled to be closed, but we'll probably sublease some of it out to uh, some interested parties. Okay, uh, another question uh, from Mark Russo. Uh, he hasn't seen the changes to PJ Golf Club. What was done to improve the practice facilities since we no longer have the learning center? So that was, there, it's, a, it's a two phased approach right now. We expanded the, the tee, the grass teeing area tremendously, uh, moved it out, um, had to change one of the holes on, a, on one of the other golf courses to accommodate that. We, we actually hosted the uh, senior PPC there last month and uh, by people that I talked to that participated, rave reviews. We'll have phase two will come probably in the, in the latter part of this year or next year um, to complete the back end of the range. Okay, thank you. I've got a few queued up now. Um, back to uh, uh, Jeremy, uh, deferred compensation, will that be guaranteed? Who will fund it? So the, the PG of America will fund it. Um, we're we're going to fund it ourselves uh, out of our reserve fund or some fashion thereof. And um, it each PGA member will will have the opportunity to earn points towards being eligible for the deferred deferred comp. Okay. Uh, next question is from Kevin Tanner from Golf Tech. Uh, what are we doing to grow the candidate pool of new members, and how many more are we bringing in each year? So great question. Um, we actually are starting to to do some recruitment. Um, we've also the membership committee has removed some of the barriers. Uh, by that, I mean the, the PAT, uh, we are now allowing NCAA scores to count towards the PAT, NAIA scores to count towards the PAT. And once these collegiate players uh, successfully pass the PAT in a collegiate event, they get a notification from the PGA of America stating that they have completed the PAT component uh, in order to, if they're interested in becoming a, a PGA professional. We also have uh, one recruiter in the field and our career consultants are being asked to assist. I would look for additional recruiters to, to be added to the staff at some point in time to help us with that. Excellent, thank you. Uh, this is, uh, I got one more question, but I uh, just wanna remind everybody we've got about one or two minutes for everyone to enter their name and member number into the chat to get credit, uh, MSR credit for attending the meeting. Uh, that officially closes at 9.31. Uh, but another question from uh, Jeffrey Zachman of Piney Branch. Uh, will PGA Associates in the program now be able to go all virtual or did I misunderstand? I have an assistant who started this spring and will be looking to advance this winter. So at, at the current time, it is 100% virtual. Uh, we don't have a timetable of when we will go back to the other format. If it was up to me, I would say we would, I would like us to stay virtual until we open up PGA Frisco in 2022. So I will push for virtual to remain the way to go through the, the program for all of 2021. Okay, um, we've got another question regarding the PAT. 
what are we doing to use the word police, police the PAT setup? I have heard some terrible setups and unfair conditions. So, um, you know, what, what we have done is we have allowed in inclement weather, we have allowed lift clean in place in the PAT. And once again, it's, it's uh, up to the PAT, PAT administrator to determine the, the setup of the golf course. Uh, we haven't given any leeway as far as we have discussed the idea of whether there's a curve to the PAT that has not flown very well through the membership committee and a, a curve I mean if it's terrible weather and the top two scores are 160 and 161 do those two automatically qualify that has not met with favor from the membership committee at this point in time so uh, but we are constantly looking at PAT setups um, not necessarily how to make it easier, but how do we have a higher percentage pass with a decent score? And we found that actually lengthening the, sh the shortest yardage available assisted in that. Because what would happen is the course ratings would go up. And even though the, the course doesn't dramatically change, the scores would then, we, we actually found an increase from I think about 25% passing the PAT to 33% passing the PAT. Excellent. Uh, last question I received by text. Can you go more into PGA tee times and what's that going to mean for our PGA professionals? So um, once again, this is, this is an offering up to uh, from Supreme Golf to PGA members. They will have the access to set the pricing. They will have the access to the consumer data. You, you participate, you set your own inventory. Uh, you set your own pricing. Uh, this is not uh, a, a situation where it's done off a of barter system uh, and where the where Supreme owns the tee times. You still own the tee times. Supreme will just take a commission based on those. And, uh, you know, for some PGA members, it's going to be very beneficial for their facilities. And once again, uh, we're also looking at trying to establish something within within sections. So sections could actually be a host portal for those uh, tee times. Yeah, and, I, and I'm going to echo that from, from the MAPGA perspective. We just had our conference call with uh, Supreme Golf and PGA Tee Times. Uh, the commission percentage, I got that question, is 10% for PGA professionals. It's 15% it's for non-PGA facilities. Uh, and it's the best thing about it, as John Linder just indicated, is that it will not be a barter tee time where if the uh, vendor doesn't sell it, they'll sell it at whatever price just to get it sold. Uh, so you as the operator will be able to, um, you know, uh, charge what your rate is and it's the, and it's in Supreme Golf's best interest for it to be as high as possible because they're getting 10% of that number, right? So if it's a $50 greens fee, they'll make $5 and it's in their interest to make five and not one by selling it for, for $10, which may happen in other, uh, in other uh, situations. Uh, I got another question from Anthony Romano, uh, kind of following up on the last discussion we had about the virtual apprentice program, John. Would it be more advantageous to keep the apprentice program virtual and rely on the mentorship of the associate slash member relationship? As stated, $750 virtual, no travel and loss of wages is far more attractive than missing a week. You know, we're, we're looking at what that uh, looks like going forward. There's conversation of, especially once Frisco gets complete, we envision at least one trip to PGA Frisco kind of as a, uh, graduation, if you will, uh, to, to visit the PGA headquarters and to get to experience the best of the best. Um, whether it stays virtual for, for all levels until that point in time is still being discussed. We have some that feel like there should be two trips. I'm a big uh, proponent of the virtual aspect, having seen it work real time with my staff. Uh, as I said, they they had their chin in their chest, not knowing how they were gonna get through the system. And once they went virtual, they saw a light at the end of the tunnel. They saw an opportunity. And, um, and it's just spurred, it spurred both of those young men on. They, 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 they didn't feel like there was an opportunity to finish because of once again, being gone for a week, uh, the cost of $2,000, but being, being at home, $750, both of those young men were able to come into work at their leisure at, at the end of the day. They, they did the virtual learning from nine to five. 
the learning is is with um, PGA facilitators. It's it's not it's not videotaped. It's live. It actually it actually allows for for better learning. Um, associates can videotape the, the learning process. So if they're taking notes, if uh, if an instructor is talking, they don't miss uh, any information while they're taking notes. They can play back the video. They can live chat. It uh, they can interact with their with their fellow associates through the live chat. So there's actually better communication going virtually from what I'm seeing initially than, than actually in person. Okay. Yeah, uh, this is another question along the same line. So it might not be a, a very long answer, but has there been consideration for some MSR credits for associates to meet during their PGM work experience portfolio or each per, each per each level to make them more involved and give them more initiative in finishing their work experience portfolio quicker? At this point, that has not been a topic of discussion. There has been a topic of discussion of a potential B25 classification where if a young man or woman were not able to pass the PAT, that they could go through all three levels and not elect into membership, but they would stay an associate and then require MSRs to continue within the program while they worked on their golf game in order to pass the PAT in order to become a member. That has been uh, something that the membership committee has reviewed for the last year and has actually brought before the board for discussion. So that's actually in, in the works, but not directly within each associate level. Has there been a necessarily an MSR requirement to discuss? Thank you, John. I got one more question. I know you got to get to another meeting, but uh, this last question from the uh, chat, how does the PGA plan on promoting their partnership with Supreme Golf to increasing marketing, to increase marketing share and awareness of this platform distribution? So that's, uh, it's being marketed and promoted on PGA.com right now. Yeah, and I, and I will add, you're going to see some stuff from the section here in the next, uh, over the next couple of weeks. Uh, the plan is to roll it out in 21 and, and start getting people enrolled uh, on the platform uh, this winter. Uh, so when, uh, when golf is uh, back going in, this, in the spring, uh, we'll, we'll be ready to go with that. Okay, I, I think that's the rest of the questions, Mr. Tremblay. All right, thank you, Mr. Gould, John Lindert and John Madden, thank you for your time with us this morning. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Wish you a prosperous rest of your year and hopefully see you in person in 2021. So move thank back you. to our agenda. Secretary Hunter, would you please conduct a roll call? Good morning, everyone. Thank you for tuning in today. Um, thank you also for your patience as we try to navigate this new model of uh, meeting here today. Um, so uh, the only people that you're gonna be able to hear as I do the roll call are the officers. The rest of you that are present, if you would just please type chat in, or type, type here into the chat <laughs> um, as we go along, just so we know you're here, uh, that would be great. And um, I won't be able to see the chat, so I'm just gonna roll through the names. So here we go. Uh, President Josh Tremblay. Here. Vice President Andy Weisinger. Here. Secretary Lynn Hunter, here. Director at Large, Jeff Montrose. Honorary President, J.P. Lund. Here. A8 Director, Eli Morales. Tournament Committee Chair, Kevin Haney. Northern Chapter President, Mark Russo. Northern Chapter Vice President, Eric Brock. Northern Chapter Secretary, Brian Dix. And Northern Chapter Director at Large, Sean English. The Central Chapter, President Jay Dufty. Our Vice President, John Oberly. Central Chapter Secretary, Robin Beach. And Central Chapter Director at Large, Eli Morales, again. <laughs> In the Southern Chapter, our President, Dan Capozzi. Southern Chapter Vice President, Scott Graber. Southern Chapter Secretary, Kevin Haney. And Southern Chapter Director at Large, Brian Liebler. On our Board of Control, Chair Matthew Schulze. Board of Control, John Madden. Here. John Malinowski, Kevin Taylor, Paul McCallion, Robert Dolan, Michael Arnsbrack, James Folks, 
Robert Fretwell, Wayne Hawley, Hank Majeski, and Alan Ranowski. In our legal counsel, Stephen Nemiroff. And as we already know, District 10 Director John Madden and Executive Director John Gould. Here. Thank you, everyone. PGA professionals dedicate their lives to serving their members and customers and to promoting the great game of golf. So while newly elected members join our ranks, we also lose many colleagues each year. I ask that we all include in our thoughts and prayers any MAPGA members, apprentices, and family members that may be ill or otherwise suffering. I now ask for a moment of silent meditation for those beloved Middle Atlantic PGA professionals who have died since our last membership meeting. James Lefty Barbet, formerly of Eagle Haven Golf Course on Little Creek in the Southern Chapter, and Jim Napier, formerly of PGA, uh, formerly of uh, Bretton Woods Recreational Center in Central Chapter. Thank you very much. It's my honor to recognize this year's sponsors of the Middle Atlantic PGA. Instead of having a single sponsor for today's meeting, we would like to take this opportunity to acknowledge and thank all of our existing sponsors. The MAPGA would not be able to do everything that it does without the support of these great sponsors. From tournaments to educational events to providing product, these sponsors support the Mid-Atlantic PGA to grow their businesses within our section. As you head into the off season and finalize your buying plans for next season, please consider reaching out to these sponsors and inviting them into your golf shops to make a presentation of their products. We're never going, we are never going to try to tell you what you should buy and likewise, we never promise sales to any of our sponsors. We would like to do everything we can to help our sponsors grow their business as we grow ours. If you ever want to check to see if a company is a sponsor and find out which companies support the MAPGA and in any, in any way, a current list is always available at mapga.com under the Corporate Sponsors tab. Obviously, 2020 is a very tough year for many of our sponsors. Uh, many of our sponsors did have to defer their commitments to 2021. In this particularly difficult year, we sincerely appreciate all of those sponsors that were able to stick with us through the difficult 2020. And these sponsors are Adidas Golf, Britt Sloan, Byron Nelson, Capital Golf Cars, Club Car, Corksicle, Epic, Easy Go, Golf Max, Heritage Creations USA, Hole in One USA, Iconic, Jana King, Destination Kohler, Lorente Golf, Maui Jim, Nike Golf, North Coast Golf Shows, Oakley, Omega, Panacea, Peebles Golf Cars, Pimac, Ping, Polo Golf, Signature Golf, Strixon Cleveland Golf, Taylor Made, Titleist and Footjoy. Tournament Solutions, Turf Hound, Under Armour, and Virginia Artisan. 
Thank you. Thank you again to all of our sponsors for their support. I think I'll drink out of my Virginia artesian bottled water here to get me ready for the next segment. I'd like to introduce and welcome a few guests who are with us today, a few of whom you've already heard from. Uh, those are our newly elected PJ of America Vice President, John Linder. He is the Director of Golf at the Country Club of Lansing in Lansing, Michigan as well as our D10 director, uh, who is our representative on the National Board of Directors, uh, John Madden from the Riverbend Club at Great Falls. Uh, also with us today, who will speak later on, is our career consultant, Greg Stenzel, and our PGA Junior League Regional Manager, Doug Wirt. And while they are not guests, it gives me a great deal of pleasure to introduce to you those members of the Mid-Atlantic PGA Hall of Fame who could be logged into the meeting today. Mike Arnsbrack, Tom Barry, Wayne DeFrancesco, Woody Fitzhugh, Jim Folks, Fred Funk, Vinnie Giles, John Haynes, Frank Carelco, Wayne Holly, Hank Majeski, Larry Ringer, Herb Rose, Bill Spory, Curtis Strange, and Alan Ranowski. Since the minutes have been previously published and made available to the membership, I will entertain a motion from the floor to dispense with the reading of the minutes of the March 9th, 2020 spring meeting of the membership. Do I have a motion? If so, please enter your full name in the chat. It's like Michael Thomas. Do I have a second? If so, please enter your full name in the chat. Eric Brock, thank you. If you are in favor, you do not need to enter anything. Listening comprehension is a key. All opposed, enter your full name and, and say nay in the chat. Seeing no entries, the motion passes. Regarding our board meetings, since the minutes have been previously published and made available to the membership, I'll entertain a motion from the floor to dispense with the reading of the minutes of the section board of directors meetings conducted on March 8th, April 30th, June 11th, August 27th, and October 22nd. Do I have a motion? If so, please enter your name. Gary Hebner, thank you. Do I have a second? Tommy Smith, thank you. If you're in favor again, you do not need to enter anything. All opposed, enter your full name and say nay in the chat. The motion passes. Vice President Weisinger, would you please introduce our newest members? Since our last meeting together, we had 14 professionals who have earned their Class A PGA membership within the Middle Atlantic PGA. Nicholas Bergen, Mulligan's Golf Center. Andrew Blockinger, Chartwell Golf and Country Club. Scott Blundo from the Crossings Golf Club. Olivia Bowling, the Country Club of Virginia. David Cunningham, Bayville Golf Club. Scott Davis from Sterling Park Golf Club. Drew Falvey from Fawn Lake Country Club. Colin Fisher from 1757 Golf Club. Chase Flannery from Orchard Creek. Kyle Fuller, the Country Club of Virginia. Stephen Lundy from Westfields Golf Club. Jay Newcomb Jr. from the Suburban Club of Baltimore. Aaron Tu from the Golf Club at the Highlands. 
and Cal Williams from Independence Golf Club. Please help me welcome the newest members of the Mid-Atlantic section. Also, let me recognize the following members who have recently earned their half century status since our last meeting. Joe Conboy, Craig Day, Mike Felker, Frank Corelco Jr., Bill Pearl, and Dave Walker. The following members achieved their certified professional status since our spring meeting, all in teaching and coaching. Linda Gowdy, Kevin Martin, and AJ Nelson. <laughs> Lastly, the following members have earned their quarter century status since our last meeting. Holly Anderson from the Elk Ridge Club, TJ Baggett Jr. from Pete Dye River Course of Virginia Tech, Bob Beckelman III, from River Run Golf Club, Joe Burby, Bay Creek Resort and Club, Jim Burns from Akia Harbor Golf and Country Club, Kelly Crovo from Old Monterey Golf Course, Carl Filippowitz from the Federal Club, Ned Graff, PC, TPC Potomac at Avenel, Tom Green, Cardinal Golf Club, Jeremy Greiner, Jeremy Greiner Golf Services, John Huber, Bowie Golf and Country Club, Dave Johns, Heritage Oaks Golf Course, Eddie Luke Jr. from Suffolk Golf Course, Jim Mason, Pendleton Golf Club, Ann McClure, U.S. Naval Academy Golf Club, John Miller Jr. from Arundel Golf Park, Joseph Moore, from Hawthorne Country Club, Glenn Phillips from Country Club of Woodmore, John Ronis from the River Creek Club, and Richard Setter from Hogneck Golf Course. Mr. President. Thank you, Andy, and congrats to all of our new members, half century certified and quarter century. Well, on the subject of membership accomplishments, I could not have been more proud to represent the Mid-Atlantic PGA at the virtual PGA National Meeting. There, we helped honor the Women's Player of the Year, Joanna Coe. Also, we recognized J.P. Lund as the 2020 Deke Palmer Award winner for overcoming adversity. J.P. will officially be honored at the 2021 annual meeting. Thanks to both of you for making the Mid-Atlantic PGA so proud. Joining us today with a recorded update from the Maryland State Golf Association is future executive director and current MAPGA member, Mr. Kelly Newland. Please listen to this update from the MSGA. Hello everyone. This is Kelly Newland with the Maryland State Golf Association. Just wanted to uh, say hello and give a quick update on the MSGA and all we have to look forward to for 2021. I wish we were able to see each other face to face. I look forward to the time when we're able to do that again once this all blows over. We have a lot to look forward to next year. Um, as many of you know, Bill Smith, who's been with the association for 25 plus years, is retiring at the end of this year. And I have the privilege of taking over for, for Bill on January 1st. Currently, there are two open positions with the MSGA. I'm number one looking to replace myself in the Director of Rules and Competitions position. We also have the Director of Handicapping and Course Rating position open as Matt Sloan is leaving at the end of the year. So both of those jobs are on PGA links as well as IGA.org. Uh, I tell you number one in case you're interested yourself, but number two is you may know someone um, that meet those uh, sets of skills that we're looking for and you can point them in the right direction. So this off season is going to be a busy time for us as we look to to hire two new positions, hopefully get them started in January and get them trained uh, and ready for the season ahead. Next year, 2021 will be our 100th uh, anniversary for the MSGA. Uh, we have a lot to look forward to with that. We were founded in 1921. 
We plan to visit as many founding clubs as we can next year to celebrate and use that whole season as a real celebration of our centennial. Um, the 100th Maryland Open will be at BCC July 12th through the 14th. The 100th Maryland Amateur uh, will be at Rolling Road, and those dates are June 10th through the 13th. So those are two of our founding clubs that uh, we're able to visit and celebrate our 100th Maryland Open and our 100th Maryland Amateur. Uh, we're really excited about those because both of those clubs actually hosted the first championship. BCC hosted the first Maryland Open and Rolling Road hosted the first Maryland Amateur. So to be able to come back after 100 years and, and use those same facilities uh, will be exciting for us. We also, if, if you may have noticed that the Maryland uh, Golf Hall of Fame was recently announced, we look to uh, induct our inaugural class in the spring of 21. You can check that out. We have a new website. It's called MarylandGolfHallOfFame.org, and you can actually download an application and submit um, an application or resume for someone that you would like to uh, see included in the Maryland Golf Hall of Fame. I know our committee has been very busy at work putting together a list of names and resumes and, and discussing who should be in that inaugural class, but uh, we're really looking forward to, to celebrate the history of Maryland and all of the people that uh, have had an impact on the game um, throughout our 100 years. So our 100th, our 100th year celebration is right around the corner. The, the Hall of Fame is going to be a big deal for us as well as the, uh, the major championships that we host. Um, I want to take a moment just to say a sincere thank you uh, to each and every one of you for helping us handle this crazy year that we've had, uh, helping us reschedule events at, at all the clubs. It wouldn't be possible without you. So many of, so many of you, too many to name, um, have been over backwards for us and helped us find new dates and, and helped us um, continue to have a season when, when uh, we were worried in the spring that we may not have a season. Um, it's, been, it's been so much time making sure that we're focused on keeping ourselves healthy, keeping our families healthy, uh, keeping our employees healthy, but each and every one of you have done an excellent job in, in making sure you keep the game of golf healthy. Um, so I think, uh, I think you, you deserve a, a big congratulations for all the work and efforts you've put in to keep the game of golf healthy. And, and I, I thank you personally. The, the, our association thanks each of you as well. I hope you get to spend some time with your family over the holidays. Uh, enjoy Thanksgiving. Enjoy Christmas. And, and enjoy some downtime that uh, so many of you um, have, have more than earned. Uh, I know that golf clubs are staying busy and packed and you're, you're doing more rounds than, than you ever have. So there's uh, even though there's been a lot of negatives to this year, uh, I think we can take some positives out of the fact that um, uh, many people are playing, people that hadn't played in the past, people that may have played one or two rounds a year are playing more golf. And, um, and golf's a hot topic right now, and we're lucky to have it. So congratulations to each of you for all you've done this year, and uh, I look forward to catching up. Uh, with all of you as we as we get the spring season started and, and get back out on the golf course. Um, thank you very much and I uh, look forward to seeing you soon. Thank you for the update, Mr. Newland, and congratulations on being named executive director. If you have any questions for Kelly, please message him directly using the chat feature. Next, executive director of the Virginia State Golf Association, Matt Smiley, We'll share a recorded update from the VSGA. Good morning, MAPGA professionals and apprentices. I hope you and your families are doing well. My name is Matt Smiley. I'm the executive director of the Virginia State Golf Association, and I'm coming to you today uh, with an update from, from our association. Sorry we can't be together, but we look forward to being together with you soon. I'd like to start by thanking PGA members and apprentices for all they've done and 2020 during a, obviously a very trying year to keep golf going uh, in the midst of a pandemic. The changes that were made swiftly to adjust operations to keep the game safe were vital to the game of golf being played in the state of Virginia and we can't thank you enough. So on behalf of the amateur side of the game, thank you for all that you've done to keep the game going. Got a few brief updates. I'm going to start with the joint ventures that we have with the Middle Atlantic PGA and the VSGA. We now have three championships that we run jointly, uh, long-standing long championships such as the State Open and the Senior Open, and then we were happy to play the seventh Junior Four Ball this year. As you know, the State Open made its last visit to Ballyhack in July with Mark Lawrence winning. It was a great event uh, despite the weather delays, and we were happy to crown Mark 
as State Open champion. Thanks to Delta Dental for their longtime support and to Ballyhack for hosting. And we're very excited about the 2021 State Open coming to Independence. Speaking of Independence, we had the Senior Open of Virginia, which was again conducted jointly by the two associations. And the golf course was in tremendous condition and we were happy to crown Matt Chagru as our Senior Open of Virginia champion. With the Junior Four Ball Championship, we had Jack Burby and Amber Makowitz that won that event. Jack, the son of a PGA professional, and Amber became the first female to be a part of the winning side for the Junior Four Ball. And the two of them went on to play in the VSJ Four Ball Championship after winning the Junior Four Ball. Perhaps the largest venture that we, we work jointly with the Middle Lane PGA is on the handicap side. And this year was obviously a big year with the advent of the World Handicap System. Again, thanks to the PGA professionals and apprentices for all they did to uh, educate themselves and their club members about the changes related to the handicap system and to learn new terminology words such as playing conditions calculator, net double bogey became part of the terminology and we appreciate everyone's work to educate themselves again and their golfers and to get their club authorized to administer the world handicap system. Hopefully your, your golfers and your club have enjoyed the daily revisions that come with the World Handicap System, as well as the ability to post scores hole by hole and uh, use stats to track their game. Tied in with the changes with the World Handicap System was a new MyVSGA app that was released in January. The app has seen a lot of success uh, with the hole by hole posting and stat tracking that are part of the app. And the, the daily revisions also allow uh, the app to be used. We've seen great traction with the app with uh, many scores posted on the app that may have previously been posted at the club kiosk and we'll look to continue to improve the app to make it uh, a better tool for your members to use. If you have any suggestions on the MyVSG app, please let us know. We're always looking to make improvements. One exciting event we added to the schedule this year was our Net Amateur Championship. This was the first year we'd held such an event and it was very well received. The championship allows average golfers to have a championship experience. So please spread the word to your members and let them come out and have a chance at winning a VSGA championship in 2021. As was the case with Mid-Atlantic section events, VSGA postponed our events and did not uh, begin holding events until June 29th. When we did start hosting events, it came with significant changes to logistics and operations around the event. And we would like to thank all the member clubs that hosted events this year for all that they did to, to help make the events happen and keep the players safe. Once we restarted our events in late June, participation was very strong. Golfers who had been playing a lot of golf uh, while the events were postponed were ready to get out and compete, and we had a very uh, high level of participation and high level of competition during our event season. One unfortunate thing that came this year was the postponement of the U.S. mid Avenue Championship. As you know, that event was scheduled to be held at Kenlock and Independence in September, and it would have been the first USGA championship in Virginia in a number of years. We're hopeful that the USGA will come back for another championship in the next few years, but don't have any updates along those lines. As I'm sure you've seen, golf has been an outlet for many in 2020. Rounds are up nearly 40% posted to the to golfers gin records in Virginia, and the T-sheets certainly reflect that. Hopefully golfers who played more golf in 2020 will stay on the course as we go into 2021. And again, thanks for all that MAPGA professionals and apprentices did to help make this happen. A couple of new developments on the VSJ side that we're very excited about include our new status as a 501c3. The VSGA has been a 501c4 since its inception, but this year we were granted 501c3 status. So we're excited to see what doors that may open for the association. In addition, look for, for news in the near future about the VSGA's partnership with a program called Youth on Course. We'll be in touch to uh, let you know what the program entails and hopefully find ways where we can work together to help provide access and affordability to junior golfers around the Commonwealth. You know, VSGA is a volunteer-based organization and we're always looking for individuals to help us promote and serve the game. If any of your members at, at your club are interested in giving back to the game, be it as a rules official, a course raider, a shuttler, a scorer, or to serve on any of our committees, please have them reach out. We're always looking to use volunteers to help us improve what we're doing. We know that 2020 was a challenging year for everyone, and we know that there were many negatives that came from this year. However, the game of golf has seen some positives, and we're looking forward to working together in 2021 to build on those positives 
and face the challenges that will be coming at us in 2021. Thanks again for all that you've done. We look forward to seeing you soon. Thank you, Mr. Smiley, for the recorded message. If anyone has any questions for Matt, please message him directly in the chat box. All right, moving forward on the screen, you can see all of our committee chairs. And I'd like to publicly thank them all for their hard work over the past year. A few committee chairs would like to add some information to their published written reports. Uh, first up, a little better on-air talent than, uh, than myself. We've got our education committee co-chairs, Mark Russo and Sean English, who you saw a lot this, uh, this off season with some of the virtual Zoom education. They're gonna provide a video message. Hey everyone, Mark Russo here uh, with the Education Committee, joined by my co-chair, Sean English. Um, sorry we're not able to do this all in person, but uh, it is a different year. So we wanted to give you an update on my part on how 2020 went from our perspective, and then Sean's going to cover 2021. Obviously, 2020 was a weird year for all of us, but I'm really proud of how uh, all of our professionals came together and the Zoom online education series that we did was a smashing success. And given the success of that platform uh, and the fact that we were able to include professionals from other uh, states, sections, and even other countries, uh, we're planning on doing that again in, uh, in 2021. And again, we had a huge following for those. Uh, so we really appreciate your support um, and your commitment to education despite the uh, crazy circumstances. So 2021, while not exactly how we wanted it, uh, was certainly a great year uh, for education despite all the circumstances. So Sean was gonna cover a little bit of 2021 uh, for us. Sean, go ahead. So obviously I'm I'm not probably the only one that's gonna be looking forward to 2021 much better than getting 20 and 2020 behind us in the past. But uh, obviously like Mark said, we've got a lot of success with the programs that we had this year. That was one of the great things is we were able to do many things there. So this January and February, we're gonna to try to set up many of the same things of trying to do some type of, do more educational seminars on Zoom calls and so forth. So that's gonna start in January and February. Uh, Mark and I are kind of sitting down right now and trying to prepare that for everybody. So if you have any ideas of subjects, if you have ideas of speakers that you would like to hear, please contact Mark or myself and we'll kind of try to make that, uh, put that into our schedule. Uh, we also are looking at 2021 and looking forward to an exciting, uh, you've probably heard this many times in our uh, presentations today, but we're going to have a super meeting coming up where we bring in the Hall of Fame uh, dinner, our spring, spring membership meeting, and then include the teaching summit. Our teaching summit this year is going to be the afternoon of March 1st and all day on March 2nd. It'll be at Lansdowne Resort, so please make plans to attend. It'd actually be a great time to kind of see everybody and hopefully be able to spend some time with each other since we've not been able to do that in 2020 very much. But please mark your calendars for February 28th, March 1st, and March 2nd with the Teaching Summit uh, with our chairs, John Scott Redan and uh, Pat Bettingfield doing the uh, setup of that and being the co-chairs of the Teaching Summit. So looking forward to 2021. Looking forward to seeing everybody soon in person. Thank you very much. Thank you, everybody. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you, Mark and Sean. On behalf of the tournament committee, we'd like to next recognize all of the tournament winners. So please watch this video.
It's my pleasure to share with you the 2020 Player of the Year standings. Please note that the actual points earned in final order for open division will not be complete until the conclusion of the match play. In the open Player of the Year, Josh Spate from Colonial Heritage. Second, Lark Larkin Gross from Springfield Golf and Country Club. Steve Delmar from Columbia Country Club. Young Jew, Top Golf Loudon. And John O'Leary from Trump National Golf Club. On the Senior Player of the Year, Rick Schuler, Stonehenge Golf and Country Club. David Hutzel, Pine Ridge Golf Course. Dick Mass, PGA Life member. Brenda McGrath, Hidden Creek Country Club. And Dirk Schultz, Beaver Creek Country Club. Women's Player of the Year, Joanna Coe, Baltimore Country Club. Shannon McHugh, TPC Potomac at Avenel Farms. And Joy Bonhurst from Blue Mesh Golf Course. Finally, the APA Player of the Year, Larkin Gross, Springfield Golf and Country Club, Ian McConnell, Springfield Golf and Country Club. That, that should be a typo. They can't have two guys from, I need to work those guys harder. Uh, and third, Steve Del Mar from Columbia Country Club. Uh, all kidding aside, uh, these three gentlemen and the rest of the contingent, uh, as you, many of you may know, we've got a pretty big golf tournament taking place starting this Thursday, a little south of here. No, I'm not talking about the Masters. I'm talking about the PGA National Assistance Championship at PGA Golf Club. And good luck to all of our MEA PGA professionals who will be representing us down there. Congratulations to all of you for an outstanding season. Next, we are joined by video by A Director Eli Morales to provide an APA update. Please watch. Good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you to the section board and MAPGA staff for putting this virtual meeting on today. Uh, thanks for all your efforts this year with the crazy time we're in. Uh, couldn't have done it without you guys. Would like to thank all of our host sites for 2020. Really appreciate all your support over the years. Uh, really appreciate your support this year with schedule changes and everything. Uh, and everyone, we're really looking for you tremendous 2021 tournament schedule. Um, be on the lookout for emails over the winter from me with education seminars and any happenings in the APA uh, going forward. Um, as for a recap for 2020, uh, big congrats to all of our tournament winners and a big congratulations for a great year playing uh, Larkin Gross from Springfield Golf and Country Club this year's APA Player of the Year. Larkin, great plan. I know uh, you're gonna keep on playing well, going down to Florida for some big events. Uh, we're all rooting for you. As for uh, the APA itself, uh, we look to announce our scholarship winners for 2020 in January of 2021. Uh, we're looking to award 12 scholarships this year. Uh, big thanks to AHEAD for providing these uh, $500 scholarships to anyone who gets through any of the three PGA level testing. Uh, be sure if you have not yet become an APA member, but you've been involved with tournaments and the education stuff we've done uh, this past spring, uh, be sure to uh, sign up for APA membership so you are eligible for these scholarships. Uh, on a little bit of a sour note, um, unfortunately this year's Independence Cup against the Philadelphia Section uh, Assistance Association will have to be postponed until next fall. Um, we will be using the 2020 and 2021 point standings to comprise next year's team. So Anybody who's played this year, uh, continue on playing next year. Uh, we look to really field a great team, uh, bring back the cup, and we'll, we'll be hosting uh, in 2021. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to myself or any of the three chapter directors, uh, Jeff Main from the Northern Chapter, Ryan Fellows uh, in the Central Chapter, or Ryan Marks in the Southern Chapter. Please feel free, uh, any job postings that you want to go after, any education questions, or any questions involving uh, the APA in the Mid-Atlantic, please do not hesitate to reach out to any of the four of us. I uh, wish everybody a great fall and a happy new year, and look forward to seeing everybody in 2021. 
Thank you, Eli. Greg Stenzel, our PGA Career Consultant, is next with his update. Please listen to Greg's recorded remarks and type any questions you may have for him in the chat. Good morning, everyone. This is Greg Stenzel, your PGA Career Consultant. And thank you for letting me spend just a few minutes with you this morning to talk about adversity and success, facing issues, and developing solutions. First, I would like to congratulate you on a job well done. When the pandemic arrived, you faced an unknown adversity. And while we first faced the fact that our facilities were closed, we responded. We assisted our fellow professionals, members, and guests, and helped them face their hardships. Whether it was assisting and registering for financial support, or providing food products or staples for the home when store shelves were depleted, you met the challenge. Once our facilities were open, you faced a new set of challenges, and again, you faced the adversity, created a plan, and charged head first with continued service to your customers. You responded to an increased demand with fewer employees with a strange set of restrictions, rules, and requirements. And again, you responded. You responded in a phenomenal way and achieved success at your facilities. You deserve a round of applause. Congratulations. And now, as we close out the year, we're riding the wave with record rounds, increased sales, and new membership growth. The pandemic created unprecedented growth in our game. And now my friends, now's the time to engage your members and guests, continue to ride the wave and support the existing momentum. Before we start to plan for 2021, now's the time to look at the success stories you had during the year. You need to share your success stories with your general manager, your board of directors, your golf committee chairman, your owner, and your existing members and guests. There may never be a better time to take advantage of the opportunity that exists right now. By using your success stories, it's a great time to possibly negotiate a new compensation agreement or develop a bonus program based on increasing revenue streams or new member growth. It could be a great time to increase your golf operations budget or improve the compensation rates for your staff. Definitely make sure you update your resume with your success stories so that they're available for future use. As I mentioned previously, as you begin to plan for 2021, keep these ideas in mind. Get your members and guests involved. New members are anxious to enjoy the benefits of membership. The same old things may not be enough to keep your membership engaged. Ask a lot of questions. You may think that you know what your members and guests want, but the only way you'll really know is by asking what they need or desire. Take a good look and review your programs. Are they meeting the needs of your members and guests? Is it time to improve or increase the number of amenities you offer at your facility, such as improving or increasing the size of your driving range, possibly adding top tracer technology, which could generate new revenue. Encourage participation and do not forget one of the most important things, motivate and coach your team. Finally, do not be afraid of change. You've already recognized big changes earlier this year and you found out that you can face them, embrace them, and beat them. And as you move forward into the new season, do not forget to record your results. Record the number of times you engage your members and guests. Record your program success and any new revenue you're able to generate. Monitor your increased revenue streams resulting from your actions in both golf operations and the impact that events may have on your food and beverage sales. And finally, 
Now is your time. It's your time to create a momentum that is unstoppable. As always, I appreciate your support and I hope that you know I'm here to help you as we move forward into the new year. As always, wishing you the best in your career. Thank you. Thank you, Greg. We appreciate you sharing this important information. John Gould, did we receive any questions for Greg? Uh, we did not, or perhaps uh, Greg has a few words he wants to add, but I will say that uh, as we've said many times, Greg is not your unemployment uh, consultant. He's your employment consultant. So don't wait until you don't have a job to talk to Greg. Uh, please talk to him uh, when you're thinking about renegotiation or, or hiring uh, staff or anything along those lines. That's what he's there for. Greg, do you have anything to add? Yeah, just thanks, John, and appreciate uh, everything that you and your staff have done. And to all our members, again, if there's anything I can help you, there's never been a better time than right now to take a look at any of your career development plans. So look forward to talking to you and seeing you all soon. Thanks. Thank you again, Greg. Next, since there are a number of important updates in the area of player development, I've asked MAPJ Secretary Lynn Hunter to assist in providing these updates. Thank you, Mr. President. I'd like to begin by introducing a video from committee chair John Oberly, who will speak on player development grants. Fellow professionals, my name is John Oberly, and I'm the first assistant and director of player development at Mount Vernon Country Club. And I'm here today to um, speak to you about the MAPGA player development grant. Uh, there's $25,000 available for um, you to utilize for your camps and clinics. Um, snag equipment, inflatables, and all kinds of things that you can enhance your program and programs. Uh, each year we only receive about 23 or you know, to 20 to 23 applications and we feel like we should receive hundreds because all you're going to do is better your camps and your clinics and programs with things that you, you can utilize to better your programs. Uh, we ask that you fill this preliminary application out online um, on the MAPGA website uh, deadline is November 30th for those applications. If you have any questions, um, please reach out to myself or Claire Jansa at the MAPGA office, and we will be glad to help and answer any questions to help you uh, with the application process. Again, please fill it out. Uh, we'd love to help you enhance your programs and get you things that you need to make it better. Thank you. Thank you, John. Again, this is a great opportunity to apply for funding that's gonna help support any of your programs um, at your facilities. If you uh, just a couple of the details, and you know, it needs to be sort of a current program, not a brand new program, but um, it's a great way, like I said, it's a great way to, to uh, get some new kind of cool gear for your, to, to help support your programs. Just remember the deadline is November 30th. Now we also realize that this is a tough year to implement new programs at your facilities, but as a section, we're excited to share with you more information on the doubles golf program. This is a great way to keep newer members at your club engaged, as well as those who have been playing for decades. You may have seen this video during chapter meetings, but it's worth seeing again. Please join me in watching this 90 second promotional video. There's a new game in town from Jack Nicklaus and the founders of PGA Junior League. Introducing Doubles Golf, the trademarked rebranding of the age old two player scramble. Doubles Golf relaxes the game makes golf more fun for the recreational golfer, speeds up play, enhances nine hole rounds, keeps senior golfers in the game longer, inviting to women and children. PGA professionals will have the exclusive rights to conduct doubles golf programs at their facility, including qualifying for the U.S. Doubles Golf Amateur Championships. Teams will have the opportunity to post their doubles golf scores by using the 2PG Rating and Ranking System app. This app provides teams with the ability to compare themselves against other teams and see where they rank at their course, within their state, and even worldwide. Registering your doubles golf team is quick and simple. It can be done on your phone, tablet, or laptop. Teams can be created in men's, women's, seniors, and mixed doubles divisions. Once you have registered, your team can begin posting scores. Posting a score takes a few seconds and can be done from anywhere. The 2PG app also provides the ability to see where your team ranks at your course, statewide, and nationally. Check the team rankings page to browse and filter through all other doubles golf teams, where you can click on anyone and browse through their previous scores and see where they rank. 
Doubles Golf, the perfect programming platform for PGA sections and their members to continue growing the game. Awesome. Sounds like a cool new uh, program there. If um, Just remember a couple points about it. You can create some revenue with your um, doubles golf events by you know, hosting couples nights, ladies nights, senior nights, um, parent junior series. You can have a four to six week league series. Um, and there's even the, the, the doubles golf club championship, which uh, allows teams to move on to the section championship and a chance to qualify for the national championship. So you can keep that running leaderboard and uh, try it out next year and, you know, hopefully keep the member engagement going all year long. So next I'd like to introduce your regional uh, league manager, Doug Wirt, who also has a recorded update. Please send in any questions for Doug via the chat as he's also available immediately following the video to help answer them. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Mid-Atlantic PGA section meeting on behalf of the Coaching and Player Development Department at the PGA of America. I'm looking forward to sharing with you things that have happened this past year, as well as help you understand how we can continue to help you create value at your facilities. I know that 2020 has been an amazingly challenging year for all of you, and I know that you're tired and ready for some rest and relaxation. I want to say thank you for all of your hard work this year in dealing with all the special conditions having to be put into place to deal with the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. Uh, but also want to say what an amazing year it has been seeing the great growth in the game of golf that we all love. This is now a valuable opportunity for all of us to work hard to create sustainable growth in the golf business and have an exciting and very successful 2021. I want you to know that my commitment is to help you create more value for yourself and your facility. We can accomplish this through number one, developing a deep sense of understanding of how your facility operates across all facility types. And number two, helping provide valuable guidance on how you can increase engagement and revenue at your facilities, then helping you create that value for your members, your guests, your ownership, and for you. All of us in the coaching and player development department have been working hard to put together platforms that will help you create and increase engagement and value at your facilities. First of all, we have our coach education and coach resources through the American Development Model Training in PGA.coach. Through that, you'll have your general consumer awareness and engagement tools in PGA.com, which will help you reach out to consumers in your area and in your facility. We also have our seasonal programs to engage and build specific communities such as PGA Junior League, PGA Junior Golf Camps, Next Gen Golf, which focuses on young adults and college age, as well as helping you engage your families through PGA Family Cup. And then lastly, we have year-round programs to retain and raise consumer engagement, which is your PGA.coach lesson plans and retail tribe advertising campaigns. Despite the pandemic, we had an amazing year in PGA Junior League. I want to remind you the purpose of PGA Junior League is to bring friends, families, and communities together through the game of golf. Despite the pandemic, we saw over 37,000 players nationwide, and we saw over 1,800 players in the Middle Atlantic PGA, which, by the way, was the number one section in the country for PGA Junior League registrations in 2020. As we look to 2021, we look forward to providing a safe outdoor activity with more flexible local league structures, as well as a 17U section championship and regionals. I'm very excited to let you know today that in 2021, PGA Family Cup will be going nationwide. PGA Family Cup exists to connect families through the game of golf by having fun together as a family. In the past two years, we've piloted the program in a dozen markets with huge success. We've seen an average of 15 families per facility. We've heard incredibly positive feedback from captains and participants, and we look forward to seeing what will happen with this program in 2021. 
as we go forward in 2021, we'll see a national launch of the program, awards, team gifts, fun, flexible programming, as well as a new website to help you manage the program. For more information, please contact me personally and go to pgafamiliescup.com. More information will be provided in the next few weeks to help you learn how you can create more community at your facilities with PGA Family Cup. As things start to slow down a little bit for you and you get into the off season, I want to encourage all of you to take a look at PGA.coach and complete the training so that you can have access to the PGA.coach program and platform. The purpose of PGA.coach is to bring the American development model to golf. We've had over 3,000 PGA professionals complete the ADM training. The value of this to you is that it brings expertise in age and stage appropriate programming for you to use in your programs. It gives you access to lesson builder tools through PGA.coach and then access to coach tools and profiles which will be shown on PGA.com. Once you've completed the training and then your profile, you'll then be listed on PGA.com. This is where consumers can go to to find instruction to help them get into the game or improve their game. You are then provided a lead generation tool which will help you increase your business, help increase engagement at your facility, and then improve the value that you have to your facility and your ownership. To close my time with you today, I wanted to share a quick story from this past week on perspective with you. This past week, we were visited by Hurricane Zeta here in Alabama and unfortunately had to deal with a power outage for almost 20 hours. With the power out and no way to work, my wife's son and I decided to work on a puzzle together. As most people do, we started with the outside edges of the puzzle and each took responsibility for the four corners of the puzzle to start. I started on my corner and was doing well until I could not find the one piece to complete my assigned area. The area I was working on was gray in color, so I searched several pieces and continued to have problems finding the right one to fit. I even got up from my chair and looked at it from different angles, as I know we all do in this situation. My wife finally asked me what my problem was. I told her I was having trouble finding the gray piece to complete my area. She took a quick look at it and said, that is not gray, it is light blue. Sure enough, I found the light blue piece that immediately fit that spot. I was able to complete my assigned area of the outside of the puzzle. Her perspective of the color of the piece was different and helped me successfully complete what I was working on. I want to encourage you to always make sure you're looking at things in a different perspective. Those of us on a national and section level in the areas of coaching and player development are here to help you look at your operation, programs, and offerings from a different perspective to help you be successful in inspiring, engaging, and retaining players at your facilities. I want you to encourage you to use us as well as others to help you reach your full potential and enjoy what you are doing. To help you more, Claire Jansa, Greg Stenzel, and I have gotten together to create some virtual offerings for you starting the week of November 16th. Greg and I want to help you with maintaining the momentum we have seen in the 2020 season. Claire and I will be offering virtual town halls to discuss PGA.coach, PGA Junior League, PGA Family Cup, and Doubles Golf. Information on how to register was emailed to you as well as been shown in the section's news and notes. I want to encourage you to join us to help you learn more and look at things from a different perspective. On behalf of all of us in the Coaching and Player Development Department at the PGA of America, I want to say thank you again for all you have done during this challenging yet exciting year. I want to say thanks to the section officers, board, and staff for all their support, and a special thank you to Claire Jansa for working together with me to assist you with player development in the Middle Atlantic PGA. I wish you a restful off-season, an amazing holiday season for you and your family, and an incredible 2021. Thank you, Doug. As a reminder, if you have any questions for Doug, please enter them in the chat now. And as Doug said, uh, special thanks to Claire Jansa and the rest of the team here for supporting Doug and their efforts throughout the section.
Executive Director Gould, do we have any questions for Doug? Do not. Uh, Claire did post the uh, the link to sign up for some of those conference calls that, that Doug and Greg and Claire will be hosting uh, over the winter. Uh, and Doug, I don't know if you want to add anything uh, to your report verbally. Uh, no, thank you, John. I just want to quickly say thanks to everyone again for uh, all of your uh, just wonderful efforts this year in dealing with uh, 2020 and just the amazing things that have happened and just remind you in the off season to take a look at PGA.coach and uh, learn more about it, learn more about PGA Family Cup, uh, look at our educational opportunities we put together um, and uh, keep riding the wave and uh, keep going forward with this opportunity we've, uh, we've had, as well as wanna wish everybody happy holidays and um, a restful time this off season. So thank you so much for the time today. Great to be a part of the section and, uh, and to work with all of you. Thank you again, Doug. It's, it's so cool to uh, see in this role. Some of you may not know, but I've known Doug for over 20 years and actually worked for Doug uh, as an intern almost 20 years ago. So thank you for everything you're doing. Uh, moving forward in the script here, I'd like to next ask our honorary president and PGA Reach Mid-Atlantic board member, JP Lund, to share an update regarding PGA Reach, the Mid-Atlantic Foundation. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I am honored to serve uh, as one of three PGA members that are on the uh, board uh, for the PGA uh, Reach Mid-Atlantic Foundation. Uh, Executive Director John Gould provided a presentation for each of the areas and the pillars of the foundation at, at the, uh, our meeting, our spring meeting that we had virtually uh, a couple months ago. For the update on a week where we celebrate our nation's veterans, I can't think of a better focus than that of PGA HOPE program. PJ Hope, as most of you know, stands for helping our patriots everywhere. Uh, please uh, watch this video we have for you. Across the United States, brave men and women have answered the call. They have sacrificed. And they have done their duty honorably. Now as they return home, it's our duty to look after them. Our mission as Americans must be to ensure their continued support and well-being. We are here for you as you've always been here for us. My PTSD when I came home was pretty bad. You come into civilian life and you just don't fit in anymore. But something extraordinary happened in my life. PGA Home. It's meant a world of difference in my life. Prior to coming into the golf program, I was at home probably 98% of the time. If somebody's willing to take time out of their personal lives and invest it in you and to show you that they think that you're special and that they think that you can pick up and carry on and represent the country in a positive light again, it's awe-inspiring when it actually happens. You've stepped out of your dark hole and onto kind of like a little bit of heaven. I like to thank my PGA pros, Judy and Donna, for giving me my life back. It helped save my life and it got me re-engaged with my community, with my family, with my friends, everybody. got so many wounded warriors in the special ops program that have been touched by Ken June that when they talk about him will immediately go to a choked up, misty eyed setting. And these are tough guys, but they love the man. They respect the man beyond compare. And they are really proud of the fact that they have him in their life. PJ Hope is life changing. And it's life changing not only because we're providing golf, but we're using it as a therapy. We use PGA professionals who are specially trained to interact and deal with our veterans. And we're using golf to better themselves and better their lives. The one thing that we're missing in civilian life, where do we fit in again? And that would be PGA Hope.
As you can see, these programs are far reaching and life changing. <clears throat> While this next video is a little quiet, join me as we watch this video from a participant in right here in our section from at Congressional Country Club. Greetings. I'd like to take the opportunity to thank all the staff at PGA Hope and the Congressional Country Club for their work to put on the PGA Hope clinics that I've attended. Uh, my name is Matt Underwood. I'm medically retired for PTSD, bipolar, OCD, chemical dependence, and suicidal ideations. Uh, since I've been retired, it's been upgraded to schizoaffective disorder with a suicide attempt. My disorders had many effects on my lives. Most importantly, they took me away from my family. With the work of the PGA Hope staff, I'm back with my family. So thank you guys. If, you, if you're watching this and you can support PGA Hope, please do. They're doing God's work for veterans. Thank you for the information, everyone. I had the pleasure of meeting Matt Underwood about a year ago at Congressional at the National Day of Hope. And I just wanna echo the sentiments that Honorary President J.P. Lund mentioned there and that you saw in the video. It's now time for my report. Um, you know, throughout this pandemic, we've come together and gotten stronger as an association. I know early on back in the spring with Maryland and Virginia professionals uh, having completely different perspectives on how they were going through the uh, pandemic, it was great to kind of reach out and, and just um, lend a helping hand to our fellow professionals. And, and I hope that as we come out of this, and as we've mentioned many times today, how golf has gotten stronger, uh, continue to engage with your members, uh, to be a leader. Uh, I'd like to ask the Central Chapter Board to please consider returning the pro assistant in the fall, so I have a good chance at uh, winning a check there with my talented assistants. Um, and, uh, you know, as it as we say, try to get out there and play and compete. It was great to see many of you a couple of weeks ago at the MAPGA Team Championship. Uh, and lastly, before I move forward, I'd just like to say that I'm really proud of the work our section staff has done on our behalf during these trying times, uh, working remotely for most of the year. Uh, now they're kind of on an alternating week schedule, but uh, we have not missed a beat um, and, and just really gotten great support from them. So thank you. Um, as you see up here on the screen and, and Sean English kind of stole our thunder a little earlier. Um, if you were you know, able to uh, join us for the fall chapter meeting, you might have learned about this, um, but we're hoping that we'll be able to gather in person in what, we can, what can be described as a super meeting concept. Uh, if any of you came from the Carolina section, um, this kind of mirrors a little bit of what they do down there, but we're looking to host the Hall of Fame and awards banquet um, on Sunday evening, the spring membership meeting, on Monday morning and then the teaching summit all in the span of three days uh, from February 28th through March 2nd, 2021. We're hoping that grouping these important events throughout the section will make it easier for many more members and associates to attend from across the section. So please save the date and look forward for more registration information as it becomes available. Also, don't forget that we're still running the instructional video program. We are always in search of social media content and we're running this one-time program to pay you $50 per video, up to four videos. Uh, and the deadline for that for you to submit your videos is December 1st. Next, uh, the PJ Merchandise Show will also be completely virtual. We have a few slides there that Reed Exposition has sent us to keep you informed. So hopefully you can participate in this. I know many of our, our sponsors and your sales reps will be reaching out uh, as we get closer and closer to this time. Regarding the reports of the directors, the section committee chairs, executive director, and myself, you have had the meeting report booklet emailed to you and posted online prior to today's meeting. If you have any questions of a general nature regarding these reports, they should be asked during either unfinished business, new business, or open forum, whichever is appropriate. If there are any specific questions of any of the officers, directors, committee chairs, or the executive director, please type them in the chat now. I know everybody at home got dressed up wearing coat and tie today just to get in the spirit. Sergeant at Arms Thomas made sure of that. Um, having seen none, I'll entertain a motion from the meeting to accept all the reports as presented. Do I have a motion? If so, please enter your full name in the chat. 
Mark Russo, still got a few people awake there. Good. Do I have a second? If so, please enter your full name, Eli Morales. Thank you. If you're opposed, or sorry, if you're in favor, you do not need to do anything. All opposed, enter your full name and say nay in the chat. Looks like the motion passes. Ms. Secretary, is there any unfinished business? If no not, unfinished business. Thank you. If not, I'll move on to new business. Ms. Secretary, do we have any new business? We do not have any new business. All right. We will now move into the open forum session. Please enter any open forum items into the chat now, and Executive Director Gould will read those items. Uh, Mr. President, I do have two uh, uh, items that were emailed to me uh, to read into the record. Uh, first is Alan Ranowski, and he apologizes. Uh, to, he doesn't get to stand at the microphone, which he uh, truly loves, uh, and he has to do it through me. Uh, so uh, from Alan, on behalf of Lieutenant Colonel Dan Rooney, the entire Folds of Honor team and myself, thank you to those that fundraised and helped, the, helped us to honor their sacrifice by educating their legacy. It was such an exciting year at the beginning with the announcement of PJ Hope and Folds combining efforts for Patriot Golf Day and then COVID threw, a big wrink, threw in a big, wrink, big wrinkle. Being able to take care of the veterans and their families is a mission I hope we all embrace as we know freedom isn't free. This year we'll be, we will be able to award roughly 3,800 scholarships, but unfortunately there are over 2,500 qualified applicants we will need to turn down. There is still time to do a donation collection, maybe marathon, auction, and other ways prior to the end of the year. As a reminder, please use the donation form online so that you get your MSR credits and sent to the department number 13 address. God bless each of you and your families, prayers for health and happiness, and God bless the United States of America. That's from Alan, how you doing, Ranowski. How you doing? Uh, so please go ahead and type uh, any, any other um, open forum in there. I did get one other email earlier this week. Uh, Dave Eaton from Crofton Country Club has a pro-am uh, November 27th. That's the Friday after Thanksgiving called the Turkey Shoot. Uh, one pro, four AMs, four AMs, you can contact him for information or entry. I just got a text from uh, Quinn Sullivan. Just want to make sure we knew that Bobby Bowers, which took the year off in 2020 due to COVID, will be held at Springfield <coughs> July 12th through the 15th of 2021. Uh, I got another item uh, from uh, Mark Russo, uh, uh, education chair, along with Sean English. Uh, please reach out to Mark Russo and Sean English if you have any ideas for online education topic or a guest. We want you to get the education you are looking for to better yourself. Uh, we got another uh, uh, post from Jeremy Greiner. Uh, Precision, whoop, these are all moving on me here. Uh, Precision Pro will have net best pricing on any order until December 31st, pre-book by then to also get 60 day terms. Uh, Bowling Green's Pro-Am scheduled for October 12th was postponed until November 16th. This is from Tommy Smith, I believe, uh, was postponed until November 16th, next Monday. The event is to help raise money to fight uh, uh, colorectal cancer for uh, Tommy's wife, Jill, who's battling against colorectal cancer. Uh, they're looking for four, five more teams. Please contact Tommy at Bowling Green Country Club. I know I just talked about as we wait for more items to be shared in open forum, please don't forget to save the date, February 28th, 2021, Hall of Fame Banquet and Awards, March 1st, 2021, Spring Section Membership Meeting, and March 1st and 2nd, MAPGA Teaching Summit. John, do we have anything else for open forum? Don't see any. All right, as we await any final items for open forum, I'd like to introduce our staff who are in this virtual meeting as well. First, I'd like to thank our PJ Works fellow, Tacita Garcia, for her great work with us this year. Thank you, Tacita. Next, let me officially welcome uh, two staff members, Ben Smith, our communications manager, uh, and Andrew Gridley, director of business affairs, both in their first year. They've done great work for us so far. Many of you have gotten comments on the, uh, the new social media images and graphics. Uh, ben and some of the other members of the team have really been responsible and really growing that. So thank you and keep up the good work. Now for our returning staff. First, we have three staff finishing their second year with us. Claire Jansa, who's a PGA member and our, PGA, our player development coordinator. 
Colin Elphick, our junior golf director, and Christine Hoffman, our membership directors. Thank you for all three of you. And next, Eric Southard, our assistant tournament director, seven years with the section overall. Bob Heinz, a newly elected PGA member in his first year as an assistant executive director and third year as tournament director, 15 years with the MAPGA overall. And finally, John Gould, who celebrated 55 years, I mean, 25 years with us in April. Sorry, John, it's just, uh, it's been a good run, uh, completing his ninth year as executive director. So thank not you. Quite, for not quite that old, thank you. No. Uh, we did get one other uh, comment uh, from David Green. Uh, why is the Middle Atlantic section having tournaments at Trump National? Uh, Josh, I don't know if you want to try that or you want me to handle that? I'll, I'll uh, tiptoe through it and then you can fill in the blanks. But uh, I, I know uh, Trump obviously having uh, PGA professionals here in the section, uh, their facility has been a great supporter of our section events. We've had some bad weather luck there throughout the year. Um, you know, obviously I know PGA uh, National and Kerry Hagan and the team are also getting this question. Um, you know, at this point, we're not trying to necessarily jump into those political debates and, and really just trying to uh, field events at the courses that we're going to get great participation. Obviously, geography is uh, part of it. Um, and the golf course there that uh, I got to play a couple weeks ago was in great shape. So, John, if you want to add anything. Yeah, I would just say that the, the staff at, at uh, Trump National DC have been spectacular in terms of helping us out. That was actually a reschedule. Uh, we were scheduled to be at Salisbury Country Club, uh, a 27 hole facility in Richmond. And because of COVID, they were unable to host. And we were looking at not having that event because we're still doing one cart per person. Uh, and Trump jumped in and said they could host. And obviously, and they also have 144 carts, which allowed us to still play the event with one person per cart. Uh, so they uh, really uh, bailed us out in that regard. So the, the staff at Trump National has been very supportive of our program. And um, we, we thought it appropriate to, to, uh, to go there. Any final items we're up in for them? I don't see any. All right, having not received any more, we will move to adjourn the meeting. Do I have a motion to adjourn the meeting? If so, please enter your full name in the chat. JB Sanjakmo. JB, thank you. Do I have a second? Please enter your full name, Mark Russo. If you're in favor, you do not need to do anything. All opposed, enter your full name and say nay. All right, thank you everyone for joining us today. Thank you to my fellow officers and the team here at the Mid Atlantic PGA. Wish you all happy uh, holidays, Thanksgiving, and hope to see you uh, soon in person and virtually uh, stay engaged through the winter months. So the meeting is adjourned. Thank you, everybody.